Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, just a couple of introductions first. I'm Ed Groombridge and I've been in education recruitment for a very long time. Um, I run the primary business for Protocol. Glenn, who you can see, has been with Protocol for a very long time. Um, he's really in charge of all the partnerships and first call agreements we've got with schools. So he makes sure that we look after all our schools, our key schools as well as we can and help them with whatever we need. And he runs our Finchley location. And we've got Will, who's the most important person here, who um, founder of Bramble, which is a purpose-built technology platform. And he'll be able to show you what it can do um, in a couple of minutes. So we thought we'd put this on just to show how we're providing live online teaching and tuition and to give you an idea of what else you could potentially do to add to the excellent work I'm sure you're already doing with your children and answer any concerns or questions you might have about access or safeguarding, stuff like that. Um, I'm sure most of you know Protocol finds jobs for people in education and support schools with their staffing. So typically we provide schools with support staff and teachers, permanent, long-term or on a supply basis. We also help schools with specialist staff with well-being and anxiety. And increasingly we're providing more and more tutors. Prior to the lockdown, it was almost all face-to-face, -face, typically numeracy and literacy in primary. In primary. Post-lockdown, we've done thousands of hours of online tuition, almost all through Bramble. We didn't stop during the lockdown. We're one of the biggest agencies down in London in the South. We spent the last few months solidly recruiting candidates. Um, We've never had such a large, comprehensive group of candidates ready to go this term over the summer and in September. Um, I put a little poll together with just with a couple of questions, and it would be good to get a sense of what you currently do um, with online teaching. Um, that would be great. Um, if you've got any questions going through this, um, if you could use the Q&A function, that would be really good, and we'll do our best to cover them. If we don't manage to get to them, we'll definitely get back to you afterwards. Um, Glenn's already got a few questions people have asked him prior to this and if you don't mind after this um, either me or Glenn will drop you an email um, just to see what you thought and see what we could improve on next time. I'm very aware that it's five o'clock and we're eating into your evening so um, I'll hand over to Will who'll um, show you how Bramble can potentially help you help your children. Thanks very much. Excellent, thanks Ed. I'll just start by uh, sharing my screen so hopefully you should be able to see that now. Um, so just before I get into the demo side of things, um, you know, you would have heard Ed talk there about the fact that Bramble was purpose built for education. Um, and of course, whenever we say that, people say, well, what does that mean? Um, and there are about a dozen different reasons I could give for this. But in, in the interests of uh, letting you all get to your dinner on time, I just want to boil it down to two key points, really. Um, the, the first of which is very much focused around the live lesson. And what we've tried to do is, is build a, a platform that enables both teachers and students to have a highly interactive live lesson experience using tools that they're familiar with using either in the classroom or, or on pen and paper to have a really engaging interactive lesson experience so that the student isn't sat there sort of passively watching but actively participating in the lesson and the learning as they would if they were sat in the same room as the teacher or tutor. And then the second big thing for us is that we view this transition to online learning as, as not merely about substitution. We don't want to just take what's happening in the, in the offline environment and move that online. Instead, we want to ask, you know, what can we do differently? What areas are there for improvement when we move into that online world? Um, and a big area for that for us is the searchable lesson recording so every lesson on bramble is is recorded transcribed and and fully searchable so that has two real key benefits the first of which as as ed alluded to is safeguarding you've got a full record of the session so if if there is a need to investigate anything you've got everything you can possibly need that there is a record of a session also acts as a, a deterrent and helps keep everyone safe be it its staff or students and then equally importantly for us is that those lesson recordings are a phenomenal revision resource for students to be able to go back to again and again as they continue to support their learning going forwards um, so I'll show you how that side of things works at the end um, but without further ado I'll jump into a, a quick demo of the Bramble session app so you can see hopefully how a live lesson works 
So Bramble sessions take place in rooms. These are simply uh, web links that the teacher and student both navigate to. Um, when they get there, we do some quick camera, speaker and microphone checks. Um, so we quickly test the speakers. We're playing an animal sound here and asking to click the animal. And then we text the microphone too. So you can see here the, uh, the circle illuminating in the middle there as I speak. So that means that by the time we load into the session, we know that, that my audio is working. So the, the first question I ask isn't, uh, uh, can you hear me? But rather getting straight into the lesson. Um, and, and we've really tried to design Bramble here to minimize friction. So there's no, no need to download or install anything. The student hasn't got to fiddle around with a load of settings or accounts. All they need to do is open up that web link and they get straight into their live lesson. And they can hear that teacher or, or tutor's voice in minutes. Um, and this is true across devices as well. Whilst we recommend using a, a laptop or computer where possible, just as much for screen size as anything else, you can have a full Bramble lesson on any mobile device, Android or iOS, and on tablets, iPads or Android tablets as well. So once we're in the session, what we've really tried to do is, is focus the lesson around this shared notebook, um, kind of like a, an interactive whiteboard, really. Um, so the way this works is that we've got effectively a, an infinite number of pages we can work through. So if I ever want a fresh page, I simply click this forward arrow to move on to a fresh page. And if I ever want to go back to revisit something, we simply go back. And both teacher and student can be using these, these arrows to turn page, but they're kept on the same page. So if the, the student were to turn the page, that would turn the page for me as a teacher as well. So we're literally kept on the same page at all times. Um, and then within the, the notebook itself, what we've tried to do is, is really boil the teaching experience into the simplest possible set of tools so that we can make those really easy to use and really performant. Um, and what that boils down to is the ability to draw things, the ability to type, and the ability to share resources. So if we start with drawing, I've simply got the pen selected already, which you can see down here. And that means I can start drawing things on screen as I go. Now, what you won't really get a sense for in the webinar, um, but hopefully if, if you do give Bramble a try, you'll see that the drawing is, is real time. As soon as I start writing anything, the other user is able to see that. Um, and whilst that may seem like a small thing, it's actually really important to, to help people get into the flow of the lesson. If there's any sort of delay, if I start circling something and the student can't see that right away, then that's enough to introduce that friction and, and kind of shatter the illusion of us working in the same space. So that's the, the pen tool. If I click once more, uh, you'll see it go to the eraser, so I can use that to rub stuff out. And if I click again, it'll go to the T for text, and that then enables me to add text labels. And again, these are sent in real time. So as, as I'm typing, the student can see exactly what it is I'm typing and vice versa. So if the student's struggling to spell something, I can see that rather than you know, the three dots you're used to in a, in a messaging application where you're sat there wondering what the other person is going to say. That's not very productive in a learning environment. So we've moved text to be truly real time. Um, I've seen a few questions coming in here. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get through this stage of the, the demo and then take a quick look at those and answer any irrelevant to this stage and maybe save a few to the end. So that's the, the pen and text tools. Um, you can do a, a great deal just with those. Um, you know, we can be drawing out diagrams, working out equations, typing out blocks of text. But of course, when they really come to life is when you combine them with the ability to share resources. So if I move on to another page, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, so there's a number of different ways that you can share resources on Bramble. Again, we've really prioritized speed and ease of use here. The easiest one to start with is if I click this icon here, what that will do is bring up my file explorer, choose to upload from device, and then I can go to my resources folder here and choose to upload any image or PDF from my computer into the notebook. Um, so let's say we start with this animal cell. 
So I load that into the notebook, shared instantly with, with tutor or teacher and student, and then I can start labeling stuff and maybe asking the, the student to add text labels to each part of the diagram. Um, similarly, if, if the student's got some content they want to share, they can upload stuff as well. So that's one way of doing it. Um, the other is you can, you can drag and drop. So I can pull in um, you know, an, an example from my desktop over to, the, over to Bramble. And again, that's shared instantly and we can start working through. This was an example um, taken from a, a piece we did on, on teaching younger students online. Um, and actually a, a teacher provided this as an example of an activity they had used and worked really effectively you know, with the, the students marking it up and, and kind of moving through the, the game together. So that's sharing images, um, but you can also share any PDF. And what that means is that it's very easy to get any, any PowerPoint or Word document into Bramble. Simply export to PDF and then upload it that way. Um, so if I open up my file explorer again, um, and you'll see I've got in here a PDF. I'm gonna choose to upload that. And what we do is we put one page from the PDF on each page of the notebook. Um, so that's been loaded in now and we can add our annotations in line and I've got each subsequent page in the notebook. And again, that's happened very quickly you know, no delay on either side between the, the resource hitting the page and the other person seeing it. So combining the ability to share resources very quickly and easily, um, I can also copy and paste from the web. So if I search, say, a, a periodic table, go quickly into Google Images here, right click on this image, choose copy image, come back to Bramble, and I can paste that straight into the notebook. And again, we can add our annotations on top. So those simple set of tools means you can teach pretty much anything in a variety of different ways. Um, so just to, to show you some examples of that, um, here are pages taken from real sessions taught on Bramble and you can see how those tools have been used. Um, so this example in the, in the top corner here, a beautiful drawing. I, I think this person was using an iPad, uh, so drawing on a touch screen, which is a little bit easier. You can see they've, they drew out an animal cell and then labeled that together. I actually really like this example in the middle because um, this was teacher and student, both just on a laptop. They loaded in an image. They, uh, they added some kind of gross drawing, um, circling and, and, and adding some arrows, and then added some blocks of text to explain things. Um, and as these examples hopefully show, it gives you real, real breadth and depth in terms of teaching different things in different ways. So a couple of functions just to, to finish off um, before I, I take a quick look at those questions. Um, you'll see here we've got the, the camera icon. So I can click on that and that gives us a couple of different options. I can choose to go into webcam mode or I can choose to take a snapshot, um, which enables me to take a quick picture of uh, a written piece of work or, or something like that and upload it to the notebook. So that's just another way of getting resources into the session. Over on the other side here, we've got undo. I just draw some stuff. So we've got something to undo and we've got redo too, which do exactly as you would expect. And then finally, over here on the right hand side, we've got the export functionality. So what we recommend is that teachers click this at the end of every session. And what that will do is reset the notebook and send both the teacher and the student a PDF copy of the notes, which is a really useful at a glance reference of the content covered in the session. So that's a very quick overview of the session app. I'll take a look at those, those questions now um, and just whip through those. So starting at the beginning um, from Andy, do you imagine this working best for one-to-one -one or small group usage? Would it work for a larger class? So that's a, a really good question. Um, we initially designed Bramble very much with a view on, on the one-to-one -one experience. Um, and that is where a lot of our volume does come from. We have seen increasing usage of small groups, so two to three students in a class, um, especially since lockdown when everyone perhaps had to move those groups online. And the same set of tools work very well in that one-to-one -one or small group session. We've also um, recently released a product called, 
called Bramble Broadcast, which is designed for much larger groups. Um, we specifically built this with a view to helping schools deliver teaching um, to you know, 20, 30 students, a whole class of students at a time. Um, and this works well if all the students are, are based at home or if half of them are at home and half of them are in the classroom. So if you're teaching larger, much larger groups, then Bramble Broadcast is the, is the solution for you. Works in much the same way, just handles audio slightly differently, um, which we can get into via email after the session. Um, so someone asking about how you draw on screen. Um, so I was just drawing with my mouse, um, which gives me sort of medium fidelity. Um, if I have a touch screen, then that's even better. Um, or a kind of interim is you can get these graphics tablets that you plug into your computer and they make it a little bit easier to draw and cost, say, 20 to 50 pounds rather than a, a 300 pound tablet. Um, but we've got some really in-depth stuff on this on our blog. Um, so do check that out and it, and it runs through all the different devices it involved. Um, if you're if you're looking for a more comprehensive answer there. Um, Deborah asks, can you use it with Kindles? Unfortunately not. Um, the, the web browser on a Kindle isn't powerful enough to, to run this, but you can use Bramble on an iPad or an iPhone as Andy asked. Um, and Deborah again asking about the, the children using the drawing tool without a touch screen. So again, you know, we've designed Bramble to make the most of, of whatever device people have available to them. So if the student is only on a laptop, they can still have a productive lesson. If they have access to a touchscreen device, fantastic. Um, but actually it's probably more important on the, on the tutor and teacher side than it is on the student side. Um, Andy asking about where notebooks are saved. They're saved um, in the cloud. So you get sent a link to your notebook and you can also access it from your account. And then finally, the question about being able to see the student. Um, so you can see each other when you're in webcam mode. And we've taken a modal approach here so that when you're in the notebook, you're totally focused on the content in the notebook. It also means that if, if teacher or student isn't comfortable using camera, they don't have to. And it's also beneficial from a bandwidth perspective as well. So I think that's all the, all the questions from the, the session app side of things. So what I'll do now is just briefly show you the lesson recording side of things, and then I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to more general questions, if that's okay, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Excellent, so just very quickly here, um, obviously that exported notebook is one record of the session, um, but the other is the full session recording. Um, so you can see here, this is an example of students library, obviously changed the, the email addresses, but you can see that these are all sessions um, that were delivered earlier this year, um, just towards the end of March. And you can see each session represented by what we call a, a session card. So it's got the vanilla information, like how long the lesson was, when it took place, who participated, but we're also doing some, some interesting stuff in terms of analyzing the content of the session. So the first thing you can see is the number of words spoken by teacher and student. It's kind of a proxy for, for participation. Um, and then you can also see this synopsis, which very neatly summarizes the key concepts covered in that lesson. So that is generated um, by looking at the transcript of the session and saying, what are the, the key terms that were discussed today? Um, and it means that at a glance, it's really easy for everyone involved, you know, the teacher, the student, the school, to see exactly what's being covered in any given session. And then from here, both tutor or teacher and student can launch into the, the, the lesson recording or simply view the PDF. So those lesson recordings are, are, are kind of one way of, of getting at all of that data. What we found was that what you really needed was a, a more precise tool to interrogate the lesson recordings. Um, and that what students wanted to be able to do was to search their recordings and jump into the exact point that they were discussing any given concept. Um, so that's what we spent a lot of time last year building out is this cutting edge search engine. Um, so the way this works is that the student can go to their library start typing in a concept um, and we will look up all the times that concept has been discussed 
in their lessons. And here we're looking at the, the spoken transcripts, what was talked about, the typed texts, and any shared resources as well. Um, and then what we do is we say, okay, you talked about mitosis 91 times, but let's narrow that down. What did you talk about alongside mitosis? So in this example, it talks about mitosis and meiosis, mitosis and cells, mitosis and chromosomes. We click on mitosis and meiosis, and that's going to look up those session recordings for the 41 different hits across 15 different sessions. So you can see here a list of those sessions. This one's first because it had the highest number of, of hits. We've got the synopsis here for a little bit of context. And then you can see for each hit of mitosis and meiosis being used in the same context, we've got the sentence shown along with a timestamp. Um, so what I can do here is click this first timestamp and it's going to load me into the session at the exact point that we were talking about the difference between meiosis and mitosis. Now, you guys can't hear the, the audio that I've now got playing, um, but hopefully you can see on screen that's what they're discussing. And sure enough, if I continue to, to scrub through the lesson recording, you can see that's exactly what this lesson was all about. Um, so that search functionality is just a, a really powerful way of students being able to interrogate their lesson recordings and get maximum value out of that. Um, so I'll just have a look at the the extra questions that have come through since then. Um, so there's no limit on, on, on cloud storage um, and it seems the, uh, the, the search functionality going down well. So thank you for the, the kind words on that, everyone. Um, and Glenn, did you say you had some other questions that had come in kind yeah. of in advance? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Will. Uh, thanks very much for that. Hopefully that, that has um, answered a few of your questions. I'm very conscious of your time as well. Um, and we have got a few questions that were, were asked before this before this meeting. Um, first one I, I think I can take is, uh, can you use this platform for looked after children? Now, uh, simply put, yes, uh, we've already converted thousands of hours uh, tuition to this specifically already. Um, the second question will uh, for you, if that's all right. Um, I think you probably have covered this a little bit, but can a tutor or teacher use the same lesson multiple times? Yes, I think you did cover that, but you just sort of go on, go through that again, please. Just that part. Yeah. So, so absolutely. There's a few different ways you can can do this. Um, you can either kind of reuse the whole notebook, the PDF um, that you've exported. Or my preferred approach, personally, is I've just got my folders on my computer with the resources associated with particular sessions, and then I'll just pull in those resources on the fly because that gives me a bit more flexibility in, in terms of delivering that lesson. Um, but equally, if you've constructed a, a session in Bramble and then exported that PDF, you can use that again and again. Or if you've got you know, existing lessons that are PowerPoints, simply convert those to a PDF and upload those straight into the notebook. So it's, it's very quick and easy to get those resources in and reuse them. Brilliant, brilliant, thank you. Um, next question is how much lead time do we need to set up? I mean, we've seen from your demo how easy it is to, to just get going with it with a, a, a student, but I mean, it is very simple, isn't it? Quite, quite, quite frankly, you, all you need is, is the, the technology. You just need a, an iPad or a computer or, or, or that sort of um, connectivity and, and as long as both parties have got the right time which we set up and coordinate then then it, it works perfectly doesn't it there's there's no real lead time needed yeah absolutely it's more the the kind of organizing piece um, is the limiting factor actually getting into the session is, is very quick and easy great um one thing that I was put to we haven't touched on is um, what is what if the child's broadband is quite poor what if their connection is quite poor now is there yes Sorry. So that's that's one of the key reasons we kind of separated webcam and notebook because um, the webcam is very bandwidth intensive and kind of relatively information poor compared to what you can get on the notebook. So notebook plus voice kind of massively minimizes the bandwidth requirements. Um, and then we, we do obviously have a lot of guidance and, and support on the website, which goes through various tips um, if you are struggling with connection. 
Brilliant. Okay. There are more, I mean, we could be here all night. There are more and more questions <laughs> coming through, but I'm very, very, very conscious of your time. I just want to say um, that's, that's kind of it from us. Thank you very much, Will, for your evening and thank everyone that attended. Um, anyone that didn't get a chance to write a question, if, even if you write some questions now after this uh, webinar, we'll still get the questions and we'll give you a call and we'll follow them up with some emails over the next couple of days. Um, but thank you, Will, and thank you, Ed, and thank you for everyone that attended. And uh, we, we wish you all a pleasant evening and we'll be in touch shortly. All right. Many thanks and good thanks evening. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Good night.